Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Judge Jackson, welcome. Uh, Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. You and I have known each other a long time. We have. Uh, we went to law school together. We were on the law re re review together. We were a year apart. Uh, we Happily were, so, I hope, yeah. Senator. <laughs> uh, we were not particularly close, but we were always friend friendly and cordial. We were. Uh, and you and I had a very positive and productive meeting uh, in my office uh, where we discussed a number of things, including you were there with, with former Senator Doug Jones. Uh, and we discussed how he and I and a number of other senators had for, for two different years participated in reading aloud on the Senate floor uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from a Birmingham jail, which is one of the truly great uh, advocacies for civil rights our nation has seen. And, and you and I talked together uh, about our shared admiration for Dr. King. Uh, when Senator Grassley questioned you earlier, he asked in particular about Dr. King's speech uh, on, on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial where he said most critically, I have a dream but that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. Do you agree with what Dr. King said in, in that speech there? I do, Senator. Um, as we were discussing it, uh, you referenced in my office a, a speech that you gave in January of 2020 uh, at the University of Michigan School of Law. Uh, and after our discussion, I pulled a copy of your speech and read the speech uh, in its entirety. And there were elements of the speech that I thought were really powerful. Uh, and let me say, your, your opening remarks yesterday were, were powerful and inspirational as well. And I, and I think you and your family, the journey you have taken to becoming a federal judge, to becoming a federal court of appeals judge, I think demonstrates the incredible promise and the incredible opportunity this nation offers all of us. As I read your speech at the University of Michigan Law School, however, uh, there was a portion that surprised me. Uh, and in particular in that speech, you referenced the work of, quote, acclaimed investigative journalist Nicole Hannah-Jones and her, and again, this is a quote from the speech, provocative thesis that America was born in, uh, that, that, that the, um, Provocative thesis that the America that was born in 1776 was not the perfect union that it purported to be. And indeed, Ms. Hannah Jones in her 1619 projects describes the central thesis of the 1619 project, which the New York Times laid out as a revisionist look of history, revising American history. And Ms. Hannah Jones described her central thesis as, quote, one of the primary reasons the colonists decided to declare independence was because they wanted to protect the institution of slavery. Now that claim is a highly contested historical claim. Um, do you agree with Ms. Hannah Jones that one of the primary reasons the colonists decided to declare independence is because they wanted to protect the institution of slavery? Thank you, Senator. When I gave that speech at the University of Michigan, I was asked to speak on Martin Luther King Day. And um, every year they have a Martin Luther King Day speaker. And I gave a speech about black women in the civil rights movement. Um, most of the speech, if not all of the speech, was focused on African American women, um, their contributions to the civil rights movement, unsung contributions in many cases, and then some of the more recent African-American women um, who have made claims, who have uh, done things in our society. Uh, one slide was of Ms. Uh, a journalist, as you say, who, who made that statement, and I called it provocative. Um, it is not something that I've studied. It doesn't come up in my work. I was mentioning it because it was, at least at that time, something that was talked about and, and well known uh, to the students that I was speaking to at the law school. So are you aware that, that since the 1619 Project ca came out, that it has been roundly uh, refuted by very respected historians, including Gordon Wood of Brown University, including James McPherson, 
uh, of Princeton University. McPherson called it a, quote, very unbalanced, one-sided account which lacks content and perspective. And indeed, it was so thoroughly refuted that the New York Times quietly altered the digital version to remove references to 1619 as the year of America's true founding and the moment America began. Were, were you aware of that? I was not. 